Let's finish this fucking up. I'm gonna listen to Botones Azules for like the for like the twentieth time after I get done reading. They worked out every day. By discipline I mean it. Intrinsic self-discipline, a matter of personal will. The best seals I work with were invariably the most disciplined. They woke up early, they worked out every day. They studied tactics and technology, they practiced their craft. Some of them even went out of town, drank, stayed out until the early hours of the morning, but they still woke up early and maintained discipline at every level. No mommy. They practiced their craft. Some of them even went out on the town, drank, and stayed out until the early hours of the morning. When SEALs launch combat operations, discipline is paramount. SEAL operators. SEAL operators might have to carry loads of 50 to 100 pounds of gear. Temperatures can be either extremely hot or freezing cold when on a patrol. And it comes time to rest, the operators can't just flop down and take a load off. They must move tactically with a little bit more evidence. When they want to eat or drink, they can't just drop everything and dig into the gear. Instead, seal operators have to wait until they are in a secure position, though they might be exhausted from lack of sleep when they get a chance for a seal operation to spring the ridge in which they have to leave and surprise them if they need to leave. The temptation to take the easy road is always there. 
it is as easy as staying in bed in the morning and sleeping in by discipline is paramount to ultimate success and victory for any leader in any team. Although discipline demands control and as I've never seen that word before. It looks like aesthetic, but it's as as catism. It actually results in freedom when you have the discipline to get up early. You're rewarded with more free time when you have the discipline to keep your helmet and body armor on on the field. You get double cuts to your energy removal fee. The more discipline you have to work out, train your body physically. The more discipline you have to work out, train your body physically, and become stronger, lighter, your gear feels, and easier you can move around it. As I advance into leadership positions, I strive because constantly improve my personal discipline. I realized very quickly that discipline was not only the most important quality for an individual, but also for a team. The more discipline, standard operating procedures, the more freedom they have to practice decentralized command, chapter eight, and thus they can execute faster, sharper, more efficiently, just as an individual excels when he or she exercises self-discipline, a unit that has tighter and more discipline procedures and process will excel and win. I carry the idea of discipline, standard operating procedures, and task unit behavior. Well, there were all kinds of pre-existing SO PDs that SEAL platoons and task units followed how we how we react to enemy contact and predetermined maneuvers called Immediate action drills, the way we patrol as a standard method that varies little from from platoon to platoon. Ah, that's weird, I got like. That's how I wore my collarbone six hours ago.
Every leader must walk a fine line. That's what makes leadership so challenging. Just as discipline and freedom are opposing forces that must be balanced, leadership requires finding the equilibrium in the discipline. Leaders that lack confidence in themselves fear being outshined by someone else. If a team is successful, then recognition will come from those in charge. But a leader should not seek that recognition. A leader must be confident enough to follow someone else when the situation calls for it. Dude, I fucking like reading, though. I do. I do like fucking reading. God, you guys are gonna hate me for this. I can't seem to make up my mind if reading, if I should read or not, and it's like... A leader must be calm but not robotic. It is normal and necessary to show emotion. A, a team must understand that their leader cares about them and their well-being. That the leader must control his or her emotions. Does not have an excuse to control anyone else. Leaders who lose their temper also lose respect. But at the same time, never sh to never show any sense of anger, sadness, or frustration would make that leader appear void of any emotion at all. A robot. People do not follow robots, of course. A leader must be confident but never cocky. Confidence is contagious, a great trait for a leader and a team leader. But when it goes too far, a little confidence causes complacency and arrogance, which ultimately sets the table for failure. A leader must be brave and not fool party. He or she must be willing to accept risk and act courageously, but, but must never be reckless. It is a leader's job. Let's see what how much I got left, guys. Not much at all, actually. Here's the afterward. 
Yeah, this is an afterword and the fucking the freaking I don't want to start saying freaking. Um, that's the afterword and the appendix is what's left back here. So we're. Well, I feel like these last chapter is actually the one that it is the leader's job to always mitigate as much as possible those risks that can be controlled to accomplish the mission without sacrificing the team or excessively expending critical resources. Leaders must all ha have a competitive spirit but also be gracious losers. They must drive competition, push themselves and their teams to perform at the highest level, but they must never put their own drive for personal success at the level of overall mission for success for the greater team. Leaders must act with professionalism and recognize others for their contributions. The leader must be attentive to details but not obsessed by them. A good leader does not get bogged down in the minutia of a tactical problem at the expense of strategic success. He or she must monitor and check the team's progress in the most critical tasks. But that leader cannot get sucked into the details and lose track of the bigger picture. A leader must be strong, but likewise have endurance. Not only physically, but mentally, he or she must maintain the ability to perform at the highest level, sustain that level for the long term. Leaders must recognize limitations and know to pace themselves and their teams so that they can maintain a solid performance. And definitely, leaders must be humble but not passive. Leaders must be humble but not passive, quiet but not silent. They must possess humility and the ability to control their ego and listen to others. They must admit mistakes and failures, take ownership of them, and figure out a way to prevent them from happening again. But a leader must be able to speak up when that way it matters. They must be able to stand up for the team and respect. Respectfully push back against a decision or, or direction that could negatively impact overall mission success. A leader must be close to his subordinates, but not too close. The best leaders understand the motivations of the team members and other people, their lives, and their family. But a leader must never grow so close to subordinates that one member. Okay, dude. That's crazy. But a leader must be able to speak up. Leaders must never get so close that the team forgets who is in charge. A leader must exercise extreme ownership simultaneously. That leader must employ decentralized command by giving control to subordinate leaders. Finally, a leader has nothing to prove but everything. Finally, a leader has nothing to prove but everything to prove. By virtue of rank and position, the team understands that the leader is in charge. A good leader does not grow or revel in his or her position to take charge. Minor details just to demonstrate and reinforce to the team a leader's authority is the mark of a poor and experienced leadership lacking in confidence. Since the team understands that the leader is de facto in charge in that respect, a leader has nothing to prove. But in another respect, a leader has everything to prove. Every member of the team must develop the trust and confidence that the leader will exercise good judgment, remain calm. And make the right decision when it and matters most. Leaders must earn the respect and prove themselves worthy, demonstrating through action that they will take care of the team and look out for their long term interests and well being. In that respect, a leader has everything to prove every day. Beyond this, there are countless other leadership determinies 
that must be careful. Bell is showing when the leader is troubled, the root cause of any problems with the leader has been too far in one direction. It should, of course, awareness of the big tongue needs the leadership along with discovery thereby enables the correction. The dictonomy of leadership. A good leader must be confident, but not cocky. Courageous, but not foolhardy. Yeah, but we... Dude, most of the stuff that we go about every day... That, and, you know, right now I'm thinking this to myself, like... Because I read earlier, okay, the autonomy of leadership. A good leader must be confident but not cocky. Courageous but not foolhardy. Courageous but not foolhardy. Yet he says in here, and God bless this guy's heart and, and he can rest in peace. One of his teammates fucking jumped on a green aid to fucking stop the explosion from killing two other guys. So he sacrificed himself for two other guys. And we don't have to read anything or talk about anything to know what that is right there. That's like honor, you know, that's like. So that's like, it gets to the point where like any of this is like, it's only applicable in certain situations. Like anything that I read here is just a, it's just a setting in my mind. I'm just setting up like a setting, like an, another option like volume, tent, uh, just all these different settings in your mind. Like, this is like, okay, so I gotta be, it's weird. It's almost like I should just pay attention more to instinct than, than reading, you know? A good leader must be confident but not cocky. But some of the best people are cockier than shit. I don't care what anyone says, dude. You'll have these people. You'll have on one side. You'll have these people talking about it. you got to be humble and yada yada yada. But aren't they like, oh, so you're not speaking your mind? Are you operating out of fear and humble's just an act? Like, okay. And then we got other guys like Conor McGregor just fucking letting it all out and then fucking still winning. You know, and, and he's lost too, but it's like, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, what's really, what really is the key to success? And that's being just fearless. Intelligence plays a role. It's just being fearless and just fucking going in, just relentlessness. It's like relentlessness and self-belief, fearlessness, relentlessness, and self-believe and just like this drive that's like because fuck dude like this is a this are this is for groups you know this is for groups uh, you know a leader is for a group i mean you can lead yourself but competitive but okay 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 oh, i like this all right so the dichotomy of leadership a good leader must be confident but not cocky Okay, courageous but not foolhardy. It's just, it's strange. I don't know what to believe anymore. It's like, well, the guy that jumped on the green A to save his two friends, like, that's an honor. But on the other side, was he foolish for doing that? Did he have a wife and kids at home? Why did he sacrifice himself for the two other soldiers? Okay. Did they not go through training as much to put themselves in that predicament you know so it's it's one of those things you know and 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 and, and i'm and, and i'm not i don't know we'll just say i never read that in this book and these are just things i'm imagining as examples just out of just out of like i'm not you know competitive but a gracious loser i have that i have that competitive but a gracious loser Attentive to details, but not obsessed by them. By them. Okay. Strong, but have endurance. A leader and a follower. A humble, not passive. Aggressive, not overbearing. Quiet, not silent. Calm, but not robotic. Logical, but not devoid of emotions. Close with the truth, but not so close that one becomes more important than the other. 
or more important than the good of the team. Not so close that they forget to who is in charge. They will to execute true membership by exercising decentralized command. A good leader has nothing to prove, but everything to prove. Application of business. Where's this fucking forward at? Oh, we're almost done. And then it's the after. The chief financial CFO finally caught me alone. In between meetings, and made the point clear the whole electrical division was losing money. The CFO could not believe that Andy, the company CEO, kept the division running. Perhaps at some future point, the division might turn things around and become profitable. But that future was likely more than five years ago. Five very long years in the construction industry or market conditions, weather, competition, contracts, and cost of labor could radically change forecasts. The only way we can make the electrical division profitable is if we pay them 30 or 40 percent above the market rate for electrical work. If we do that, sure they might make money, but we will lose big. Why do you think Andy's keeping it open and running? I asked some curiosity. He is a smart guy. He must see what's happening. The CFO looked down to the ground and then over each shoulder. It's Mike, he said solemnly. Mike, the CEO of, of the electrical division, I asked. Yeah, he's an old fan of Andy's, answered the CFO. And a very good friend that struck, stuck with him through thick and thin. Okay, I replied, understanding what was being implied. And he was taking care of his friend. What are the consequences of keeping the electrical division open? I asked. If we keep it open, we will continue to bleed capital. That by itself won't kill us, answered the CFO. But if we are... But if we are that tight on cash and we encounter any unexpected costs, we could be... Extremely vulnerable. I don't mind risk, but this simply does not make sense. The next day I sat down with Andy while I had worked with this company for about a year. It was mostly with the middle managers. My latest two-day workshop had been with the C-level executives. Andy had brought me in to help with the other good leaders, but it turned out he too could use some guidance. Waiting for an opportunity to open the discussion, I sat with Andy to review the strengths and weaknesses of the leadership of Cross Divisions Federally. Eventually, we got to Mike. He's a great guy, said Andy. Known him for years. He really knows the business inside and out. That's great. Replied. His division must be making a lot of money for you. Well, you know, I saw some good opportunity on the electrical side. I wanted to get into it. Andy said, with obvious means, with my experience, I know he could run a good show. So the division is profitable. I asked. Not yet. Andy answered, but it will be. How many months until it is? I asked Andy Paz. Honestly, he said it could be three to five years. Ouch, I said that sounds like a long time. In this business, and it could be too long. It's costing us money every month to keep them operating. Andy admitted that they aren't getting any contracts outside of a company right now. Have you thought about shutting it down? I asked directly. I have, but you know, it will be it will be profitable in a few years to replace so let me ask you this I said what if some other unforeseen event comes up costs you didn't expect a major incident or accident a large contract that falls through could you afford this kind of drain on the company if things went sideways probably not Andy replied is that the best strategy for company ask you know it's not that simple I've known Mike for a long time long time Andy said he's always done me right I can't just shut him down and there it was. Andy knew his loyalty was misguided. I just needed to get him to come to terms with it and see it for what it was. Since Andy had just sat through my brief from the Dutarmi leadership, I stole, I stole one of my own lines right from it. So one of your men is more important than your mission. I asked Tony. I didn't say that Andy existed as a leader. You have to, be, you have to get close to your people. I told him. And just like I said in the brief, the balance is that you can't be so close that one person becomes more important than the than the mission or the good of the team. Frankly, it sounds to me like Mike is more important than the financial stability and success of your company. It was evident that Andy knew he was leaning too far in one direction. As with many of the dichotomies of leadership, a person's biggest strength can be his greatest weakness when he doesn't know how to balance it. A leader's best quality might be her 
A leader's best quality might be her aggressiveness, but if she goes too far, she becomes reckless. A leader's best quality might be his confidence, but when he becomes overconfident, he doesn't listen to others. In this case, Andy was a very loyal leader. He knew his people well and took care of his leaders and employees, but here, his loyalty to Mike was jeopardizing the financial stability of the entire company. His loyalty was out of equilibrium, but beyond the company's balance sheet, Andy's other leaders throughout the company saw what was happening and slowly undermined Andy's leadership as their CEO. Finally, Andy would allow Anna, I know I should shut it down, cut my losses, but it's hard in a situation like this. So, forcibly, being a leader is not easy, I said. Imagine the U.S. Navy sailors in World War II whose ships had been severely damaged when their ship taken on water and in danger of sinking. These sailors sometimes had to secure the hatch to a flood compartment when men who were their friends were still in those compartments in order to save the ship. That's with their ship taken on water and in danger of sinking, those sailors sometimes had to secure the hatch to a flooded compartment where when men with their friends were still in those compartments in order to save the ship. That's an unbelievably hard decision, but they knew if they did not make that call, they risked everyone else. They needed to dis they needed discipline to make a tough decision or save the ship and save all the other men aboard. Learn to listen. In that free situation with Mike, he required discipline to shut his hatch to shut down the electrical division in order to ensure the safety of your company and all the other employees here. And he got the message two days later. He called me and told me that he had made a decision to cut the company's losses and commence the shutdown of Mike's decision. He knew it was the right move and was not confident in the decision that Andy, to Andy's surprise, Mike had told him he fully understood and had expected this would come. It did not impact their friendship. Andy found another place in the company to cooperate Mike's substantial interest. Mike's decision allowed him to add value to the cost savings in the car, allowing him some freedom to invest in more profitable Divisions in the coming. So this is an afterward. I'll read. And then it just goes straight to the appendix. Jarko and Gunfighter Company Commander from the Legendary U.S. Uh, coordinate uh, from the Legendary U.S. 506th. 101st Airborne Coordinate and Decom Fight the Bullman Seals. I like the soldiers in this army to ensure that ours protect themselves from the enemy territory. There is an answer to the age old question of whether leaders are born or made. Obviously, some are born with natural leadership qualities such as charisma, eloquence, sharp wit, a decisive mind, the willingness to accept risk. Others might falter or the ability to remain calm in chaotic, high pressure situations. Others may not possess these qualities innately, but with a willingness to learn, with a humble attitude that seeks valid, constructive criticism in order to improve, with a discipline, practice, and training, even those with less natural ability can develop to highly effective leaders. Others who are blessed with all the natural talent in the world will fail as leaders if they are not humble enough to own their own mistakes. Admit that they don't have it all figured out. Seek guidance, learning continues to grow. With the minds of extreme ownership, any person can develop to a highly effective leader. The qualities described throughout this book can and must be enhanced through training in order to build better leaders and teams that perform at the highest levels. Training is a, cr is a critical aspect that must be utilized to develop. The foundations of leadership build confidence in leaders. Uh, damn, darling. No confidence in leaders' ability to communicate with leaders may not always be the ones who generate the specific strategies, tactics, or directions that lead their teams to success. But leaders who exhibit extreme ownership will empower, will empower key leaders within their teams to figure out a way to win. Some of the boldest, most successful players in history have not come from the senior ranks, but from frontline leaders. Senior leaders simply have the courage to accept and run with them. Extreme ownership is a mindset and attitude. If leaders exhibit extreme ownership, they develop a culture of extreme ownership with their 
Then their teams and organization, the rest falls into place. Soon the leader no longer needs to be involved in the minor details of decisions like the look up and out to focus on the strategic mission of the team handles tactical battles. The goal of all leaders should be to work themselves out of a job. This means leaders must be heavily engaged in training and mentoring their junior leaders to prepare them to step up and assume greater responsibilities. When mentored and coached properly, the junior leader can eventually replace the senior leader, allowing the senior leader to move on to the next level of leadership. Much of what has been covered in this book has been covered in the past. We do not consider ourselves to be the creators of the new par paradigm of leadership principles. Much of what we learn or relearn has existed for hundreds and, and in some cases thousands of years. While all these principles are simple to understand, in theory, they can be simplified in life. Leadership is simple but not easy. Likewise, leadership is a both art. It's both art and science. There are no exact answers, specific formulas to follow in every case. In any situation, there exists a great deal of gray area, neither black nor white. There may be an infinite number of options for potential solutions to any one leadership challenge. Some will be, some will be wrong, and only they can fit in pattern. While others will solve the problems and get the team back on track, leadership decisions are inherently challenging and take practice. Not every decision will be a good one. All leaders make mistakes, so. Leader, no matter how competent experience is immune from this, for any leader handling those mistakes with humility is the key. Subordinates or direct reports don't expect their boss to be perfect. Subordinates or direct reports don't really. When the boss makes a mistake but then owns up to that mistake, it doesn't decrease respect. Instead, it increases respect for that leader. Proving he or she possesses a humility to admit no mistakes and most important to learn from them. No book can tell the leader exactly how to lead in every situation, but it is despite this sounding more than difficult decisions, a frame of reference to use for guidance when faced with tough leadership dilemmas. While the specifics of any particular situation may vary and the characters slightly differ, the principles remain the same and can be applied either directly or indirectly to a coming leadership challenge that might arise. While there is no guarantee of success in leadership, there is one thing that is certain. Leading people is the most challenging and therefore one of the most terrifying undertaking of all human endeavors. So, with that humbly reward in the distance, embrace the burden of command and go forward and onto the battlefield in whatever area you may be with the discipline result to take to your own trip leading to win. So, I got just the appendix left. <clears throat> 